but we'll start here. Y bienvenidos y bienvenidas. Muy buenos días. Espero que ustedes estén bien. Hope you guys are all well. Y vamos a practicar un poquito hoy con historias con el uso del pasado with some past tense use. Y, ah, aquí vienen más. Here come some more folks. Hola, oh. hola. Sí, Terry. Hola. Hola, Nora. Nora, Nora, estás aquí en Arizona, ¿no? Oh, está conectando. <laughs> okay. Nora was kind of in transit. So perhaps she is here on our side of the world. Our side we're of the both, We're both back. Ah, bien. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Ah, uh, uh, sí, las dos, the two of you are back. Okay. Fantastico. I know this is sort of a transit week for really a lot of people. Uh, fantastico. Vamos a empezar con preguntas, preguntas. We're going to start first to see if you have any questions. I want to show you first a little file in case you are the type of person who wants to bring up the file on your computer. This is the file we'll be using later on in the Cuento Conectado, uh, conectado con uh, la foto, foto. Uh, the story connected with the photo. And we're taking that as kind of a theme. So we'll be using these later. I will put them up on share screen, but I know some of you like to bring up uh, double screens or if you have the ability to do that. So, para que I sepan. have one question. Sí. Yeah. A Duolingo question, but it relates oh. to last week. Duolingo question. Okay. Vale. Okay. <laughs> no, Rafael y yo no estábamos casados, pero fuimos novios por mucho tiempo. Why ah. fuimos? I thought it would be era or, you know, there's not a specific time there. We were Novios for a long time. Uh, sí. Uh, buena pregunta. You know what? Let me type that up here so that other people can see it. Yeah. Because it's a long sentence and it might sure. be tough for people to keep the whole connection. Um, so is Rafael y yo. Rafael y yo. Estábamos casados. Rafael y yo estábamos Casados. Rafael and I were married. And it was actually, we were not married. No, oh, no, no, estábamos. We were not married. Okay. Pero, and then here was the blank that you fuimos, had. To, fuimos. Fuimos no novios. Por mucho, mucho tiempo. tiempo. Okay, vale. Actually, I do understand why they've got those two. And the reason they're in two different tenses is because... They are emphasizing a state versus something limited in time. Okay. So, uh, la idea aquí, the idea here is... Okay, and probably you were not too confused about why that was estábamos uh, casados. Correct. Yeah, that made sense to you. Yeah. yeah. We were not married. And casados is considered a state. Okay. Uh, right. uh, a relationship state. Okay. Uh, and therefore we're using a stud. But uh, it's a description of the state we were in in the past. So that one made sense. But here's what didn't make sense to you. And it's like, well, wait a minute. Isn't just mucho tiempo kind of fuzzy? It is. Mucho tiempo is not like saying. It might have made more sense to you if... Uh, it it might have made more sense if we no, had a more specific time period like there that. than the mucho tiempo. Uh, you know, like... Uh, uh, diez años, cinco años. Sí. Right. Seis meses, you know, something that was 
there. What they're doing is, and and these are all signals when when you hear people talking, uh, their choice of which past tense to use signals something about what they're emphasizing. They're emphasizing a contrast or comparison of a state in the past versus this chunk of time we were boyfriend, girlfriend. Okay. We were not married, but in English, in English, you might have heard this phrase more like, but well, we have been, we have been uh, 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 boyfriend, girlfriend for, for quite a while. Okay. Yeah. Um, so we're contrasting lots of time and state, or in this case, it's a, it's a negative state. We were not married, but we were boyfriend and girlfriend for a long time. So we're, we're limiting this to a time, even though we're not being super specific. And therefore the choice was to put that in the past, whereas this is a comparison. Uh, and, and we're putting a period and end to this novious thing. Well, that's true. Okay. We're, putting, we're tagging a, a period, <laughs> you know, like a punctuation period uh, to the end of that idea by using uh, the fuimos. Okay. Uh, sometimes this goes back to, uh, I, boy, I've got to compliment this guy who was in my Wednesday night group. Uh, he's, he's, he's fearful that he has an idea that isn't, he shouldn't ask, but you should, because you get insights from that. It's like, are people kind of reverse engineering with this? And in a way they are, you know, by their choosing that they're telling you that novios period is over with. Yeah. They broke up. They didn't get married. They well, broke up. yeah, yeah. It's over. Well, or Yeah. I, I mean, you know, the we were not married is just talking about a description of the state. So imperfecto. Yeah. Um, buena pregunta. Good question. Yeah. Anytime you get little questions like this from doing Duolingo or something else or something you read, it's a good thing to do. Uh, bueno. Vale, entonces I, vamos I, a I, have, I have my comedy question of the morning. Okay. <laughs> Um, I enjoyed the Augustina's uh, video with her photos. That was that was cute. But what I can never figure out is she and some of the other kind of video narrators, they seem to start their video nice and slow. Yo soy or yo soy Augustina. You know, yo soy de Argentina. And then about three minutes later, they start speaking like we know how to talk, how to speak Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> um, getting yourself in, in mode as the presenter is a tough thing. And uh, uh, here's an ageist comment. I think uh, because these people are not necessarily, some of them are trained as instructors, but it's very easy to slip out of that mode of I've got to speak slowly. <laughs> it, it's very hard to keep yourself uh in that that kind of slow mode when you're speaking. Uh, and I think that the younger those folks are, maybe the harder it is for them to do that. So, okay. Uh, so we're gonna start here. You had, you had a little video on, on uh, just you had like the, you know, the comment last week was, well, we had a video on fue versus era. And now we need a video on, Estuvo versus estaba. Uh, so you had your video on that. And again, um, they talked about when you use either the imperfecto for estar, meaning they'll have aba, aba, aba endings. Yeah, estaba. Uh, and they were isolating this to a third person singular. He was or she was just like they did in the fue era video. So when we use estaba, the imperfecto versus 
when we use a uh, stovo, the preterito. But you know, the dirty little secret is you're going to hear the sestava word, I think, actually more frequently. <laughs> okay. Um, when you look at estar in the past, I think just naturally you're going to wind up really using estaba more because quite often we're using estar with either location or description of a state. Okay. Uh, uh, description of a changeable kind of aspect. Uh, so while you may use these for something limited in time, or you may use this, uh, 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 you know, with that is still a preterite mode, you're going to wind up, practically speaking, hearing estaba. It's probably going to, you know, in the scale of preterite versus imperfect, uh, the heavier, the more used scale is going to be the estaba, the imperfecto. Okay. Uh, and whenever you talk about locations, the vast majority of time, location in the past is going to be esta imperfecto. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, whether, whether loc location was permanent or, you know, sort of kind of, yeah. You very seldom hear estuvo with location. So, por ejemplo, um, La casa de mi abuela estaba en, uh, estaba a uh, cinco millas. La casa de mi abuela estaba a cinco, uh, cinco millas. Uh, my grandma's house was five miles away. Yeah. And whether grandma still lives in that house or she doesn't live there anymore, she's passed away or she moved out, uh, no, no importa, it doesn't really matter. When you talk about location in the past, really 90% of the time, you're going to be talking about estaba, okay? Uh, location in the past is going to be estaba. She gave you an, a, an example of, you know, the car was parked for two hours, but you're not really gonna. You're not gonna need to be. You're not gonna. Be, you're not gonna be speaking or listening to people, limiting things in time with location that often. And it isn't to say that it can't happen, but it's what's the usual thing. What's the most frequently heard thing? So, uh, keep that in mind. You know, when somebody goes into mode of uh, they use estuvo instead of estaba, here is a frequent, as a conversational issue, a frequent reason to hear estuvo. Uh, it'll be when somebody was talking about they got sick, you know, as a point of conversation. Oh, uh, I got sick last night. Or oh, I was down with the flu for five whole days. Yeah. Estuve en perma con la, con la gripe. Gripe is often the word for uh, influenza. La gripe, la gripe. Uh, est Yo estuve en perma con la gripe por cinco días. Again, they're planning the idea in your head. I want to tell you how many days I was flat on my back with the flu. So you might hear estuve for yo or estuvo to talk about somebody else. You might hear that when they're emphasizing a limiting time. But if somebody without emphasizing the time just wants to say, wow, I was really sick, It'll come out as, estaba, estaba muy enferma. I was really sick, okay? So, estaba is when they're just, description is past, and it's, I was in this state, or location. <laughs> estaba, estaba, estaba. Estuvo, uh, you very well might hear if they want to limit time, to, if, if the emphasis, if the point of their saying that is that, that illness or that state lasted for a specific amount of time. 
and the emphasis is on that time, then it might become estuvo, okay? Para que sepan, so you know. But heavily weighted, you're gonna, uh, heavily weighted, you will hear esta as a matter of fact, a little bit more, I believe, then you will hear estuvo. Okay. Uh, adelante. Before we go on to our practice, because this was kind of a long video and there was a lot of information in here. Uh, Agustina, y la historia. Sí, la, la historia oculta. Hidden story. <laughs> uh, the hidden story behind Instagram posts. And, um, you know, she talks about the little story behind each little photograph she posted for really for her friends or her followers, because I don't, I don't post very much, if at all, because I'm too old. <laughs> I shouldn't say that. Some people do, but the young folks do that more than I do. Uh, y un de... La historia de, okay, la historia aquí es que ella, ella, uh, ella se acordaba, she was remembering, she was remembering, se acordaba de, de un programa infantil, uh, de un programa de cartoon, como decimos en, en inglés, sí. Uh, con la foto de una cara in Mount Rushmore. And and notice, some people notice that a lot of times uh, some things like Mount Rushmore, they won't be translated. They'll just be Mount Rushmore. Other things do get a translation like Turquía. Okay. Uh, aquí está, se acordaba de, she was remembering about, se acordaba de, del calor to, uh, del calor extremo durante su, su viaje a Turquía, y Turquía es Turquía, y al contrario, al contrario, on the other end of the specter, on the contrary, sí, al contrario, se acordaba del frío intenso, uh, mm. sí, uh, in, in, uh, in Minnesota, <laughs> in Minnesota, durante su viaje a Minneapolis, ¿sí? Uh, y aquí se acordaba de su enfermedad, de la fiebre dengue. Estaba enferma. Estaba enferma, estaba enferma. En realidad es una foto muy linda de un paisaje con, con montañas y lago y, y todo muy, muy bonita, pero en realidad ella estaba muy enferma con la fiebre de, de dengue, que es una enfermedad muy seria, muy grave. Aquí, uh, ah, uh, ella habló de, de conocer a alguien, un cantante o algo, ¿no? Uh, she was remembering meeting somebody, conocer a alguien. Aquí, uh, con, con la falda, uh, la falda es cosesa, with her Scottish skirt here, ¿sí? Uh, <coughs> es la foto de su viaje a Escocia. Escocia sí se traduce. We do translate the word for Scotland. Escocia. Muy corto. Sí. Muy corto. Sí. Sí. Eso es. Y, y, y durante la visita sus... Ah, fíjense, fíjense. Noros, fíjense. Uh, ella se acordaba de... La, uh, del placer, the pleasure, la, el placer de tener sus padres. Sus mm. padres estaban, sus padres que, que uh, están divorciados, sus padres estaban juntos con ella 
durante esta, esta visita, pero ellos estaban con, uh, uh, con la hija durante su viaje a Escocia. Y es la última. Sí, es la última. Ok. Hay alguna pregunta. Is there any kind of question you had about any little phrase she used or any terminology she used in there? Antes de empezar, before we start. Nada. Claro. Pretty clear. Ok. Vale. Y Marcos, tienes razón. Uh, you are right. Generally, uh, it, it's pretty tough for speakers to... Uh, go from, hola, me llamo Agustina y soy de Argentina. Y ahora voy a contarles un, un cuento muy interesante sobre mm. todos mis viajes y mis fotos de en Instagram. Bien, sí. Uh, <laughs> sometimes the speed gets rubbed up. Ok. Uh, pero paciencia. Yeah, when we all get kind of keyed up, we get a little bit faster. Uh, I do hope having the little vocabulary prompts was helpful for you listening so you didn't have to like look up lots of words see ¿Sí? vale bien okay perfecto y fíjense notice she didn't really translate this word she just kind of spanish right it bungalow yeah bungalow because uh you can find something that was close to it but uh you know that was the term they used probably when they showed them the rooms and She just borrowed that. That will happen from time to time, okay? Um, uh, I want you to notice a couple little phrases from this. I want to uh, point out a few things. Uh, oh, let me go in order here. Ah, uh, eso no, 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 no. This is a very young person kind of phrase, para que sepan so that you know. ¿Qué onda? ¿Qué onda con el? Ah, oh, what's going on? ¿Qué onda? Literally means what wave, like a wave in the ocean. Uh, but it's something that people use to greet each other instead of ¿Qué tal? ¿Cómo está? Sí, Claudia. Una pregunta. ¿Cómo se responde? How do you respond to that question? Oh, like, ¿Qué onda? Ah, todo bien. Todo, todo bien. bien. All good here. Yeah. You know, any any response of how you're feeling? Estoy bien. Uh, estupenda. Estupenda. Fantástica. Okay. Malísima. Really bad. <laughs> <laughs> Lo que sea. Whatever it might be. Yeah. Um, but uh, here she was kind of going on, you know, what's going on with that? It was phrased as Kalinda. This is a very young person phrase that younger people will use. Older folks, you will not tend to hear them say que onda quite as frequently, but uh, yeah. And here's another thing I want to point out. Uh, uh, mucho sentido no tiene, and she kind of got this a little bit, well, because of the way she phrased it. Uh, um, usually this will be kind of reversed. No tiene mucho sentido. And she kind of, uh, you know, Just as we sometimes kind of invert phrases in English, we might. Uh, it sounds kind of like uh, Yoda talk from Star Wars, you know. Uh, wise that was not. <laughs> But yeah, here's how you'll usually hear something like the No tiene mucho sentido. It doesn't make much sense. In Spanish, we don't use the verb make, hacer, to create. To, oh, to express the idea of make sense. They don't use the make verb for the make sense idea. Uh, uh, make sense is tener sentido. In Spanish, something has sense. Tiene sentido. It does not make sense. So they will not use the make, hacer, verb, to express that idea. It'll be tener sentido. Tiene sentido. Ah, sí, eso tiene sentido. That makes sense. Or no tiene sentido. No tiene mucho sentido. That doesn't make a lot of sense. It doesn't make much sense. Sí, bien. Okay. Uh, some other little things I want to point out. Uh, aquí is essentially the same thing as acá. 
and you'll get different people who have different opinions on these different words, depending on where they live. But essentially, just know when you hear Aka, this is a frequent thing, especially with uh, the Southern Cone, people who live in the Southern half of South America. Uh, Aka is used for the idea of here pretty frequently. Uh, it's kind of a regional thing, no big deal. Okay. Ah, uh, bien. ¿Qué más? ¿Qué más? Aquí, no. Ah, uh, oh, okay. The other things I want to point out here are, ah, sabran. Sabran is future, but she wasn't really saying you guys will know. Sabran, future tense, uh, which is what that is, is often used to talk about probability. Uh, to say, oh, you guys must know, or you probably know, will sometimes come out with by them using a future, just so you know, para que sepan, so you know, okay? And this one here, anytime something stings, <laughs> it's picar, uh, or sometimes even if it stings your tongue, yeah, yeah. Uh, um, uh, picar is to uh, uh, stick something in, picar, yeah, uh, and therefore when you talk about something, uh, uh, this is the dengue fever thing, thing, yeah, uh, me pico, it bit me, it stung me, that is uh, the verb they will use. Other little thing, just as just as a side note, this che word is a, is a very Argentine thing. And if you're wondering, is that anything related to Che Guevara? Yes, it kind of is. <laughs> che Guevara, was, his real name was Ernesto. Ernesto, yeah. But he was known as Che. And that was just a nickname. Che is a word that Argentines use a lot. It's kind of the equivalent for guy. But it's uh, it even comes down to people go, ah, Che, hey. It's just what they use. It's a very Argentine thing. And they'll hear that thrown around a lot. Hey, man. Che. That's it. Hey, Swiss. Okay. Uh, do, 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 do. Oh, th this is just a little word that they use instead of falda. That's, again, an Argentine thing. So that those things come out when uh, Agustina makes a video because... She is from Argentina and more specifically from Buenos Aires. So you do get that zh, zh, zh thing for the devil. Po pojera, pojera, instead of pojera, pojera. Uh, pojera is just a word they use instead of falda. It's just what they use. Okay. Um, and notice here is a name unlike Mount Rushmore, which she did not translate, or a bungalow, which she did not translate. Edinburgh <laughs> gets a special name. So some place names do get special names. Edinburgh is, and I think actually, if you're going to be proper, Edinburgh, right? Not Edinburgh, but Edinburgh. Uh, and as I am not a Brit, I probably had to learn that from hearing actual Brits saying it. <laughs> okay. Vamos a practicar ahorita. Right now, we're going to practice. And there are a whole bunch of different things you could use. But we want what we want to do is talk about the past. So just like she took a photo and talked about what was really going on in the background, what happened before the picture was taken, or what was going on during the picture. And you're going to have to decide uh, which ideas make more sense maybe in imperfecto versus preterito, but I thought we might use these. We haven't done this kind of drill in quite a while. Uh, algunas ideas, some ideas of things we might talk about, and you might keep it in present as well. Yeah, what are they doing? What did they do? What happened before? What will happen? So we're going to mix anything up for how it might be appropriate. Si habla, ah, aquí tenemos uh, una familia. Aquí hay una familia uh, con un camión. The moving truck. Si? ¿Qué podemos decir? What might we be able to say about these? Bueno, si, bien, vale. Las casas estaban siendo embalado. 
Oh, la casa está al lado. House is at the, on the side? The house is K. Okay. Ah, perdón. Oh, re, repite, la por favor. La casa está pasando embalado. Embalado. The boxes are being packed. Oh, okay. That's why I'm, okay. Empacado, sí. All right. We're going to change this around a little bit. Uh, I, no, it, it's good you did this because we're going to point something out. And this is going to be a habit we want to break. Okay. We, <laughs> we, no, but, but no, but this is an English All thing. Of it. This is an English thing that's very hard for us to get out of this mode. It's a mental mode that you need to avoid in Spanish uh, uh, when you're in conversation mode. We love to use what they call passive tense. Boxes are being carried or boxes are being packed. Or even put it in the past, boxes were being packed. Doesn't matter. That's all passive voice. We're not saying who packed. So in Spanish, uh, passive mode is has a very special and very limited place in conversation. You want to avoid it. Not quite as much as the plague, but you want to avoid it. It does have its place. It does have its times when it's appropriate. But the times when passive voice in Spanish are appropriate are like in written language, like let's say an article for a newspaper or uh, a broadcast on a TV show. Uh, um, you know, like they talk about, oh, these people were being rescued from an accident. We're being rescued. Passive voice in Spanish is okay for that. But when you're just in conversation mode, it is really, really avoided. It is, uh, it, it is swept aside. Go into active mode. So what we're going to do is we're going to take your idea, which is a great idea. And we're going to say something like, and you can use present or past, but you want to keep it active mode. So that means you want to talk about the person who's doing it and put the verb in that form. Not the boxes were being packed. What the boxes, Familia. what did the boxes do? The boxes didn't do anything. The people packed those. La familia estaba siendo embalado. Uh, we're going to even make, keep it shorter. What, what's the core verb you want to use? Carrying or packing? Empacar or? Oh, I was saying being because I wanted to use a star. But that's, uh, oh, I see. Okay. Let's use a star. Let's okay. use a star with this. Let's do that. Because you want to talk about, ooh, it's what was going on. Okay. Okay. Bien. So let's take uh, empacar, see? Sí? Uh, and we're going to put it for la familia, which means it's going to be singular. Okay. What are we going to do with that uh, estar verb to make it past? Or you can make it present. No importa. It doesn't matter. Estaba. Estaba empacando. Sí. Estaba empacando las cajas. Ah. Bien, okay? Gracias. Notice, not the boxes were being packed, but we love that in English. We love that. But the problem is, in Spanish, somebody isn't going to express it that way. Like 99% of the time, 99%, they will not say that. They're going to put it in active mode, meaning they're going to talk about who did that, la familia, and then use the right verb for it. Okay. It's a, this is an English, it's a magnet. We we do it so frequently in English, but it's just not used very often. 99% of the time, not going to do it. So, la familia estaba empacando. We could, we could. 
if you want to say the family packed the box, what well, uh, the family packed the boxes, that'll be more a finished act because those boxes are already sealed and closed. Yeah. Uh, la familia uh, empacó. Oh, it booted me out of my keyboard. Uh, la familia empacó las cajas. Bien. Okay. Okay. Uh, so either one of those, uh, empacó, if you want to emphasize that it was going on and lots of other things were going on or something interrupted it, it could be la familia empacaba las cajas, it could be, but then they're going to expect you to do something else. Uh, so, okay. Un ejemplo. Uh, la familia uh, empacaba uh, las cajas. Uh, if I use empacaba, they're going to expect something else is going to go, is going to interrupt in the middle of that. They're expecting more information if they're here empacaba. Okay. La familia empacaba las cajas cuando uh, vinieron a los nuevos vecinos when the new neighbors came over. Okay. So if I use empacada, the expectation is, oh, and what happened also in the middle of that? There's an expectation. See? But if you just want to keep it really down and dirty simple, La familia empacó las cajas. The family packed up the boxes. Boom. Done with that little bit. See? ¿Sí? Bien. Okay. Hay algo más. Is there anything else you want to attach to that? This could be anything. Could be description. Could be will do. Could... No? Okay. Bien. Something different here. Algo. Algo más. Anything else different about this? I just added that uh, se van a mover a Atlanta. Ah, uh, se I van a mudar. Right for moving. Se van a mudar. Se van a mudar. They're going to move. And then. Uh, and Atlanta or whatever. Sí, a uh, una nueva casa. Se van a mudar a otra ciudad. Se van a mudar. Uh, sí. se van a mudar para empezar un nuevo empleo to start a new job uh, right. lo que sea sí bien ok y aquí futuro se oh, no, van wait. a mudar I use the word move M-O-V-E-R move R move air no. no and that's no. to move your body ¿Y por qué no and why not because wow it's a cognate it sure looks like mover <laughs> and I get him confused. Which one's for what? Uh, moverse is for this. Okay. Me muevo las manos. Cuando bailo, me muevo las manos. Okay. Uh, uh, to move your residence, uh, meaning you're changing your address, it is mudarse. And only That's that. That's why I was asking. Thanks. Sí. I could say, I could use mover with no reflexive. They can say notice. Ah, muevo la taza de café. But acá, I'm moving the coffee cup over here. But me muevo. Me muevo las manos mucho cuando hablo. I use my, I move my hands a lot when I talk. Okay. Okay. Ah, uh, ah. Uh, Mira esa mujer, se, se mueve muy bien cuando baila. Look at that girl. She moves really nice when she dances. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Bien. So, uh, mudarse para residencia. Bien, perfecto. Gracias. De nada, de nada. Ah, uh, okay. It could even be something 
your idea could even be something as simple as this. Because they're kind of in the middle of this moving process, you could even just use that verb usar. Uh, ellos usaban un camión grande. Oh. They used a big moving van. They were using a big moving van. It might be that simple. Okay. Perfecto. Aquí. Wow, if any of you are able to get your kids to work to do this with you, I give you a lot of credit. <laughs> I don't have much success in that respect. Con los que haceres with chores, I don't get a whole lot of love and help with all those things. Okay. ¿Qué pasa aquí con la foto? Tenemos una madre, un, un hijo, y, ah, y toallas. We got some towels. We could talk about what happened before, what's happening now, or what will happen. Uh. I thought she was going to sew him some new clothing and they were picking out fabric. <laughs> oh, aquí, pues, posible, possibly. Well, I said, el niño creció más alto. He grew taller. Ah, okay. He's going to need new clothes. Ah, bien. That's not what well, you intended. Here's a good idea. But, uh, um, mm, eh, eh. Esta idea es buena idea. ¿Cómo se dice he needed new clothes? Because he was growing. He needed new clothes. Is that something that's, that's a, a an over with? Or is that like, a, mm, that was going on for a while. He needed new clothes. Um, I would have said necesito. Um, but maybe not. Esto, well, I think necesitaba... Uh, uh, nueva ropa. Mm -hmm. See? Uh, you know, you could limit it and put it in as necesito. Uh, you know, if it was in the middle of a, just a trip to a department store, it could be that necesito nueva ropa. Could be. Es posible. Sí, los dos. Okay. Uh, I was thinking more along these lines but you could take it a different way too. Uh, uh, sí, Kathleen. Uh, could you say, um, um, la madre y su hijo estoy doblado las toalas, toalas? Ah, estaban doblando. Está... Sí, uh, los dos, the two of them, eh, estaban doblando las Ah, uh, están, estaban, perdón. Estaban doblando las toallas. They were folding clothes. And, and so what? What? Oh, sí, Kathleen. Um, so, estaban is imperfect, and then doblando is a... Is, is that the past participle or oh, is that an adjective there? This, this is just putting it into past instead of present progressive, past progressive. Ando, 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 ing, ing, ing. I see. Sí, estaban doblando. And okay. uh, uh, doblaron if they were like finished, doblaron, they finished. And if you wanted to say, uh, uh, actually, what is... The exact same thing as estaban doblando would be doblaban las toallas. They were, yeah, they were folding the clothing can either be said as doblaban, they were doing it, or estaban doblando. Estaban doblando has a little more of a rolling feel 
to it. And if you were going to say that they are folding towels, ah, it would be est están doblado. Están doblando. Doblando. Están okay. doblando. Están doblando las toallas. Sí. Okay. Están doblando. They are folding. Están doblando. Okay. Uh, so if they're folding now, that means they washed them before the hand, right? Yes. ¿Cómo se dice? They washed the towels. Is that an over with thing based on what you see here? Yes. That's pretty over with, isn't it? ¿Cómo se dice? They washed the towels. Doblaron las toallas. Uh, no. We're going to use lavar. Oh, la Lavaron. Lavaron las toallas. Lavaron las toallas. They washed the towels because that part of it is obviously over with. See? ¿Sí? Lavaron las toallas y ahora están doblando. And now they are folding as we watch them now. Y ahora está. Ah, lavaron las toallas y ahora. Eh, están doblando. Doblando las. Folding them. That, that little las is talking about the toallas. And we can tag that on there. Or we can say, ahora las están doblando. Es igual. It's the same. The las can but go either way. See, Kathleen. I was wondering why you wouldn't use uh, the present participle since it's something they are doing now. Present part the, the the lavando is present participle. Oh, it is. Okay. I'm mixing See. up the present and past. Okay, See. sorry. Past participle. Oh, I see. Okay. Ah, yeah. bien, 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 bien. Let's take it just a quick little look because actually vale la pena. That is really, this is worth it. These two things are both words that are both correct, but they mean different things. So let's take that. Uh, uh, from doblar, doblando, ando is ing, folding. See? ¿Sí? Doblado. Wait a minute. Here is the little word. Here is the one letter that is different. It's only one letter. But it's a different word. It's still based in the idea of fold. But doblado is folded. Folded. Not folding. Yeah. Doblado is what they call a past participle. Who cares? <laughs> yeah. Uh, doblado is used differently uh, than doblando. Called ing. But they are only different by one letter. So it's, yeah, it's one of those things that can be kind of hard to hear the difference because it's such a small, uh, uh, small different thing. Okay. Bye. Oh, you know what? We could even use, we could even use this verb to talk about that picture. Mm -hmm. I had that one. Ah, perfecto. Bueno, el, el niño ayudando a su mamá a doblar las toallas. If he use ayudando, it's kind of Half naked. Ooh, we need something else with it in front of it. Oh. Ayudando. The kid helping. Oh. Yes. Ah. Now, yes. you can either say is helping or was helping. And either way is good. So, está. Está ayudando. El niño está ayudando a su mamá. Está ayudando a su mamá. Uh, el niño estaba ayudando a su mamá. El niño, uh, if you do it as an, uh, a past and done kind of activity, you could phrase it as 
el niño ayudó, uh, perdón, ayudó a su mamá. Bien, ok, vale. So there are a lot of different verbs we might use to talk about the backstory or what happened before, lo que sea, whatever it might be. Ok, bien, perfecto. Ahorita hay otra foto. We could talk about what those people are doing right now, what they did before they were standing at that table, or what they will do. Ah, uh, una idea. How about, lo, how about los las niñas servían las comidas en el refugio con sus parient, parientes? Con sus parientes, with their relatives? Sí. Okay. Uh, los niños uh, sirvieron, sí. they, were ser, they served, sí. sirvieron, sí. sirvieron la comida en, uh, el, en, el, en the, um, re, refugio. Shelter? Ah, en el refugio, sí. Sí. Uh, con sus parientes. With their relatives. Sí. Eso. Ok. Sirvieron a the served food. They were giving up food. Ok. Sí, bien. Vamos a comer. No, vamos a pasar a comer. Vamos a pasar a comer. A pasar? Vamos, van. 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 Van a pasar a comer. Oh. Hand out food? Yes. Ah. Yes. We won't. Uh, oh. Entiendo. I understand your idea. Um, we use pasar with food when you're, uh, when it's like a situation like this, uh, pásame la sal, por favor. Okay. Sí. Sí. Uh, uh, yeah. Hand me the, uh, yeah. Pass the, the something to me. But if they're handing out food, it'll either be, uh, servir or it might be dar. It might be dar, uh, but it'll probably be one of those two. Probably not pasar. Okay. Van a servir, van a dar, and then it'll be probably a le, darle or darles. If they're serving a lot of people, it'll be a les word. Uh, van a servirles or van a darles. Uh, 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 la comida, ¿sí? ¿Bien? Sí. Yeah. If you're handing out food. Uh, uh, probably not pasar. But that, again, it's a usage thing. It's just kind of knowing from hearing somebody use it. Van a servir, van a darle a comida. Sí, bien. Uh, what if we want to talk about, talk about what happened before that food made it to the table? What happened before they're standing there with the hot plates? And let's make it a, a group effort. Todos, everybody. We're going to talk about what everybody did in that picture. Todos. Prepararon. Todos prepararon la comida. O todos. Hicieron. Uh, cocinaron. Cocinaron, sí. Todos prepararon la comida. Todos cocinaron la comida. ¿Cómo? Ah, sí, así. Like that. Así. Ok. Bien. Ok. Adelante. Adelante. We got a tailgating situation. We got a... 
Ooh, we got a home from the supermarket situation. And we got a beach thing. Uh, vamos a hablar aquí, tailgating. Okay. I call on Mark for this one. <laughs> I'll oh. have to do it on the fly. I, I, but I understand. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, ellos uh, comen uh, ayer de la la, la partido, la, el partido. Ah, uh, oh, dur uh, sí, antes del partido. Uh, Before the yeah, game. Antes. Yeah, sorry. Antes del partido, sí. Ellos comen antes de, del partido. What if we want to take that idea of uh, comer? Eh, eh, bien, perfectamente. Sí, eh, muy uh, apropiado, very appropriate. Uh, and we want to say they ate before the game. Comieron. Uh, comieron. Comieron antes del partido, sí. Sí. Ah, uh, okay. Bien. Ah, uh, 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 como aquí. Ah, uh, pusieron, pusieron mesitas. Pusieron uh, mesitas uh, cerca de los carros. They set up. Little tables uh -huh. near the cars. Sí. Sí. Pusieron a uh, mesita cerca de los carros. And let's connect a little idea. Uh, uh, para servir a uh, el almuerzo. Mm. Sí. Yes. Yeah, they set up tables. Okay. Ah, let's take this verb. Planear. Planear, to plan. They planned a tailgate party. Hmm. Ah, ¿cómo se dice? They planned a tailgate. And you're not going to be able to translate tailgate. It's tailgate. Planearon. Planear. Planearon. Planearon. Una fiesta tailgate. Una fiesta de tailgate. Sí. Esa. Bien. Uh, ¿cómo se escribe? Eh, tailgate, sí. Uh, uh, para para celebrar uh, el partido de fútbol el partido de fútbol americano sí, eso es, ok, vale perfecto, bien bien hecho, well done ok, ah let's talk about what they're going to do next after they're done with the tailgating and now we won't be able to use use uh, pretérito or imperfecto or anything like that. Voy a ir al partido. Van a ir no, así. No, 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 vamos a partir. Van a ir al partido de fútbol americano. Sí, van a ir. Uh, o oh, van a attend. Van a asistir al partido. Attend es asistir. Asistir a. Asistir a. Van a asistir al partido. Bien. Ok. Perfecto. Uh, aquí tenemos una foto. Voy a engrandecer todo, ¿sí? Uh, uh, Un día en la playa. A day at the beach. Un día en la playa. 
We could describe what the day was like. We could talk about what they were wearing. We could talk about what they're going to do. Lo que sea, whatever it is. Lo que quieran, whatever you guys want. This is the one you use era for the weather or I get I we talked about this last week but I'm still confused. Okay. So let's the, talk about it was sunny. We use typically with weather. We're just going to look at the core verb and then we'll okay. figure out how to say it was this kind of weather. Okay. Here are the verbs. Oh yeah. That are going to be most frequent uh, uh, with weather. Probably one of those three. Okay. okay. So you could say it was sunny, it was warm, it was nice weather. But if you're describing that weather in the past, you need which one is it going to be? Imperfecto or preterito? Imperfecto, I think. Imperfecto is going to be the more natural thing to use. So, mm -hmm. okay. Como se dice, it was nice weather. Uh, what we're going to use for that is going to be hacer with hacer. tiempo. And it'll be buen tiempo. Hacia buen Hacia. tiempo. Hacia. Esa. Just like that. Okay. Eso sí. Hacía buen tiempo. Hacía buen tiempo. Uh, ¿Cómo se dice there was sun? Meaning it was sunny. We'll show you two ways to say it was sunny. Hay uh, soleado. Uh, oh. Uh, oh, okay. Sola, uh, soleado, soleado, sunny. Yeah. Estaba soleado. Oh. Estaba soleado. It was sunny. That's one way to say it was sunny. There's another way to say it was sunny. We're going to have to take I, but put it into imperfecto. And we can use it just with sol. Shorter word than soleado, <laughs> yeah? Uh, but instead of hay sol, it is sunny. ¿Cómo se dice it was sunny? Había. Había. Había mm -hmm. sol. Había sol means it was sunny. Also, a different way to say the same idea, estaba soleado. Son equivalentes, they are equivalent. Son equivalentes. Sí. Hacía buen tiempo. Eh, a, había sol. Estaba soleado. If, uh, if we were to be talking specifically about, say, yesterday, you know, yesterday it was sunny, would we stay in imperfecto or would we go to a preterite form? Es buena pregunta. Ah, uh, that's a really good question. Um, if my emphasis is just describing what yesterday was like, hacía buen tiempo. Hacía muy buen tiempo. It was really nice weather. Hacía buen tiempo. Uh, um, if your emphasis is that that was yesterday and now it's done and things have really changed, mm. somebody might choose to express it as hizo sol a ayer. It was sunny yesterday. But they're emphasizing more that yesterday, this was the condition, and today's a different day. Something else is happening. Yeah, see? So you might hear isosol, but more specifically, if somebody is talking about they're going to tell you everything that happened as a rolling story, it'll be hacia sol. Hacia, hacia sol, hacia calor. It was hot, hacía calor, así, like that. Okay, vale. Um, I have one for, la familia tomaba un foto en la playa. 
Ah, tomaba. They were taking. Tomaba una foto en la playa. They were taking a photo on the beach. But now if you phrase that as tomaba, uh, uh, or let's say they were taking a lot of photos, yeah? Tomaba fotos, because usually it's not just one. Tomaba fotos en la playa. Um, they're going to expect probably something else to be tagged on to the end of that. See? Uh, tomaban fotos en la playa uh, y, mm, y jugaban al voleibol. Y jugaban al voleibol. Just, they're going to probably expect more than just, uh, uh, oh, tomaban, perdón, porque es tomaban. Uh, they're probably going to expect you to tag more on. Somebody won't just say, tomaban, uh, tomaban fotos. It'll be, and what else happened? <laughs> okay, there's an expectation for more information than just that. So you'd probably have to add on more uh, to that. Okay. So if you didn't add on more, would it be tomaran? Tomaran, yeah. sí. Okay. So, uh, you know, if you just want to say, oh, look on their Instagram page because they took pictures. Mm -hmm. And then they they uploaded those pictures. OK. Uh, and that's just a fact. You're not describing. Then it's just uh, tomaron, uh, tomaron fotos uh, y las subieron. Uh, Instagram and they put them up on Ooh. Instagram see subir is go up like go upstairs but subir is often used with uploading stuff to a site yeah y las subieron and they uploaded them or they put them up on see uh, Instagram eso bien Vale. Well, I, I guess I'm confused. So if I do tomaba, that's imperfecto, right? All right. So there's yes, not, a specific, see. and it's not a specific period of time. So I'm just saying they took photos. They took si. a photo. See. Si. Yet you still need to say more about it. Well, because uh, imperfecto is usually not just a statement that's left alone by itself, mm. which preterito can definitely be. Because preterito just says they did this, they did this, they did this, okay? But by itself, with uh, it, uh, tomaban fotos, they were taking photos and somebody's sitting there saying, yeah, and what happened after that? <laughs> did something interrupt it? Yeah. Did somebody kick a volleyball and knock their camera over? Did they do other stuff connected with that? Did they take pictures and eat? Did they take pictures and play? Did they take pictures and go swimming? They're expecting more information. So tomaban fotos just in isolation, like with put a period at the end of that. Tomaban fotos. Okay. And what else? <laughs> They're expecting something else to happen in the middle of that or attached to that or right after that. They're expecting a little bit more. Okay. Could you could you just say tomaran fotos in la playa and and like leave it at tomaron that? Tomaron fotos en la playa. Ah, sí, sí. ¿Qué hicieron estas personas en la playa? What did these people do at the beach? ¿Qué hicieron ayer? What Yesterday, ayer, ¿qué hicieron estas personas en la playa? Ah, tomaron fotos. Mm -hmm. They took pictures. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, they took pictures. And, you know, because you're standing at the cooler, the water cooler with the other people at work. And they, hey, what did they do yesterday? Oh, they went and took a bunch of pictures. And then they're not expecting a whole description. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Tomaron fotos means, oh, 
they just went and did this and i'm probably not going to say a whole lot more about that i'm not mm -hmm. i'm not going to give you the whole running account yeah mm -hmm. uh yeah okay and see these are really subtle these are kind of you know nuanced things unless you started it with de nino ah okay see si, es otra cosa it's another thing if you're talking about here are some pictures from my childhood or my teenage years you know uh, lo que sea whatever it might be see si, es otra cosa it's another thing de niña see si, uh, uh, como uh, como adolescente as a teenager como adolescente uh, uh, iba a la playa cada verano. I used to go to the beach every summer. Uh, then you're talking about something that happened many, many times. And I can't even tell you how many because it was just a lot. Uh, muy vago, very, very vague. So, you know. Eso es. Okay. A ver, bueno. Ah, uh, okay. La photo aquí. Here we've got a nice couple unpacking their groceries. And they're taking stuff, stuff out of the bags. So you might talk about what happened before they got home. You might want to talk about what they're doing right now. Lo que sea, whatever. We could use, I'm going to give you some general ideas of verbs you might want to use. It could be comprar. It could be ir. Uh, it could be venir because they came home. Actually, for that, it's probably going to be more like llegar. See? Uh, because they got to that place they call home. Llegar, llegar. Uh, okay. Uh, it might be poner because they might be putting the groceries someplace. I have to take a story out of my real life. So, uh, después, después, uh, com, com, um, com, compraron las comidas, comidas, fueron a Starbucks. Ah, después de comprar la comida. <laughs> Te gusta, you like that one, yeah. Después de comprar la comida, after buying the food, and notice there it's got to be después de comprar. See, ¿Sí? después de comprar la comida, uh, fueron a Starbucks. Bien. Eso, sí. Okay. Really and there, fueron really makes more sense. Iban would not make a lot, unless you talked about they did this a lot, like it was their routine. See, si, Terry. How do you say couple? Like this is a, these are a couple of, a, their partners. pregunta, la pareja. La pareja. Oh. They're the couple. Okay. Or, uh, you know, they kind of look like newlyweds, don't they? Mm -hmm. They're yeah. still smiling. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so see, they're still smiling. <laughs> you put it away. No, you put it away. <laughs> los novios would be, uh, no, los novios can't be boyfriend, girlfriend. Los novios can also be fiance couple. Los novios can also be newlywed, but then it really needs to be newlywed. Yeah, they're still smiling, period. <laughs> But they, but they look too young to be a retired couple when there's nothing better to do than both go to the grocery store. 
<laughs> no, no, no están jubilados. They are not retired. No están jubilados. No, no Dios la pareja. La pareja. But if you use la pareja, then you need a singular verb. See? ¿Sí? Singular. Uh -huh. uh, it's like that word la gente or el equipo or la familia. We use a singular. Singular. La pareja. Uh, okay. Uh, ¿Cómo se dice? Ah, buena pregunta. ¿Cómo se dice? The couple got home. They got home. And for that got home, you're going to have llegar. Hmm. La pareja. ¿Cómo se, ¿Cómo se usa llegar? They got home. Is that going to be pretérito or imperfecto? ¿Cuál? Hmm. Now, at, we're, we're after the got home period, obviously, because you see that they're at the countertop now. So they got home. Is that going to? Preterito o imperfecto. Preterito. Preterito. Ok, entonces, ¿cómo se expresa? Sí, la pareja. Llegaron. Llegaron. Llegó. 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 Okay. Llegó a casa. Llegó. Llegó a casa. Uh, la pareja. Uh, okay, so now let's see how we, because we do this in English, but without thinking about it, we're going to, that there is your most basic idea. La pareja llegó a casa. Uh, so let's tag on after, after going to the supermarket. Where on the compras? Después, después de. Oh. Ir al super. Super como supermercado, pero super. Sí. La pareja llegó a casa después de ir al super. Despa después de comprar en el super, en el supermercado. ¿Sí? Ok. Now, poner. Is oh, sí, perdón. I'm just wondering whether it's after they went whether we should say fue, but it's, um, ah, okay. Why is this ir instead of fue? Yeah. Okay. Buena pregunta. Después de ir, why not después de fue? The couple came home, got home, after went to the supermarket. Yeah. Yeah, it can't be después de fue. Yeah. Después de, that little word de, that little hangnail thing is a preposición. After a preposition, words like de, a, con, en. After those kind of little shorty words uh, that we call prepositions, I can only use the infinitive, ir. Oh. Yeah. Could be ir, could be comprar. But it has to stay a preposition. And and in English, we say after going, and notice it can't be that ing. Ando yendo. Yeah, in English, it'll be an ing, but it won't be an ing in Spanish. See? ¿Sí? Después de ir, después de comprar. Uh, uh, después de pagar en el super. Uh, así, like that. Uh, después de fue, no. Because you wouldn't say after went. Well, I was almost thinking it was like after, since you're, yeah. it's like after it went, but. You, <laughs> you could say después de que, es posible, es posible decir, después de que fueron al super, después de que, that. After they went, after they went, after going is not the same combo, uh, word combo as after going. After going, después de ir. Yeah, see? Okay. Uh, we're going to take a look at one other little verb here. See, sí, poner, because this is special. Uh, es especial. Uh, 
Uh, poner en imperfecto es regular. Ponía. Uh, ponían. But pretty frequently, this verb winds up being a pretérito. Because quite often, you say somebody put something. Okay, they were putting clothes away, maybe. But usually, this is one of those over and done with kind of actions. So it's pretty frequent to hear poner used in pretérito. But poner doesn't, re whereas it's wonderful and with ponía and ponían, muy regular. Aquí pretérito es muy irregular, irregular. Uh, poner, it gets this thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So okay. All, all of the forms of poner are going to start with those three letters, which makes no sense because there's no U in poner and there's no S in poner, but that is what it does. Yeah. Yeah. As an, and it's irregular in English. We don't say putted. I putted the groceries away now. <laughs> put and put, it's all the same. Why, why don't you put an ED on there? Aren't you? Yeah, walk, walk. Yeah. Well, we just don't. Well, okay, this is a, they just don't. So it'll be, puse, yo puse, tu pusiste, uh, él puso, ella puso, ellos pusieron, sí, nosotros pusimos. Okay. Uh, ah, bueno, ¿cómo se dice? They put, they put the, uh, uh, they put the packages or they put the boxes, they put the food on the countertop. Countertop is mostrador, mostrador. Okay, so we'll get our mostrador word in there. Mostrador is a countertop. Okay. Pusieron la comida al mostrador? Pusieron la comida. Pusieron. En el mostrador. Oh, hey. How do you say away? They put it away. Or is there such a thing? Uh, away. Really just poner or colocar. Or, ooh, there's another word we might use, though. Yeah, like, you know, uh, that's uh, put away is one of those phrasal verbs. English has lots of phrasals where we, and phrasals means we tag on some little preposition. Put away, put up put down, put off. Mm -hmm. How confusing to somebody learning English. Put that off. It means you're delaying, right? Yeah. Put on. Clothing, maybe. Yeah. Uh, put away. It means you're moving something, right? To a different location. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Put up with. Oh, isn't that fun? How do you explain all that? Okay. Uh, just poner or colocar, mm -hmm. colocar to locate something. Uh, let, but let's take another one. Ah, sacar. Sacar means to take out. Mm. Oh, they took out the food. They took the food out of the bags. Como se dice? They took the food out of the bags. Is that an over and done with, or are we prolonging this? They were taking the things out of the bag. Now it's probably veteran. Eh, so see, okay. So let's see how that looks for saying the couple and they. That be say sacaron. 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 Uh, sacaron la comida uh, de las bolsas. Sacaron la comida de las bolsas. They took the food out. So sacar is to take something out of. Yeah. Sacaron la comida de las bolsas. If we're talking about la pareja, even though it's a couple, we're going to talk about them as a unit. It'll be singular. La pareja sacó. 
sacó la comida de las bolsas. Sí, bien. Ok. Buenas ideas. Very good ideas. But you see how a lot of our difficulty with talking the past comes down to that decision. Is this an over with or, you know, if I'm just talking about what it's just over with and done, you know, poner quite often, it could be ponía, but most likely you're talking about something that, yeah, yeah, done and kind of quickly, you know, in a few minutes. And pretérito is going to be probably a more natural choice. Yeah. And if I use a ponían, then again, they're expecting, like with Carrie had some questions about that of, well, when would I use ponía? Well, they were putting away the groceries when the doorbell rang, something interrupted it. Yeah. They were putting the gray, the groceries when she dropped the milk. Okay, they're going to expect some kind of interrupting activity if you choose this ponía or ponían combination. Uh, you know, something else to fill in uh, what else was going on is going to be kind of expected because that action of poner is, well, they put stuff away and usually it's just an over and done with action. Así, bien. Okay. Uh, bueno, ah, Nos quedan, uy, como tres minutos. Okay, we, uh, we're going to come back to these next week, and I'll give you some new pictures and a, a new set of slides, but we'll finish up with these. Let's think about, though, because part of the challenge is just thinking of which verbs we want to use and and then changing it. And I I will give you one little piece of advice. It's always good to start with the infinitive. And that may seem like a kind of a no-brainer statement, but it's not. And I will show you why, because this will be related to what came up with our first response. So you're going to start with the infinitive. If I'm looking at this guy, uh, here. The kinds of actions that he might be, might be cocinar, uh, uh, could be cocinar, uh, could be usar, could be freir, he fried. Could be sacar, he took out eggs from the fridge, right? Preparar. Could be preparar, sí, eso sí es posible, sí, preparar. Como se dice crack, like crack an egg, would that be a, a oh. big like to open? Hmm. Tengo que pensar en eso. Romper? Romper, sí, oh, romper. Yeah. And it will be romper, not reflexive. Yeah. Reflexive is you break like a bone. <laughs> yeah. Or you ripped a shirt, <laughs> something like that. Uh, uh, yeah. Sí, romper, romper, because you broke an egg open. Yeah, romper. And you did it on purpose because you got to break an egg to make an omelet. Yeah. Es así. Okay. Bien. So start with the infinitive. And here's why you want to start with the infinitive. You do not want to go down the rabbit hole of uh, um, breakfast was prepared by this very good looking young man. Breakfast was prepared. You don't want to go down that passive voice. So to avoid that, passive voice, uh, always start with the infinitive because the infinitive will always tell the story when you conjugate it. The purpose of conjugating is to tell who did it and when. Right now, a couple minutes ago, uh, 
or going to do it in the future. So always start with the infinitive because then you know, okay, I've got to conjugate this for whoever's doing that action. Okay, so we won't say the eggs were scrambled. The eggs didn't mix themselves up. The eggs didn't do anything. They were scrambled. Yeah, that's what we call passive voice. You'll say, he scrambled the eggs. He broke open the eggs. I see, like that. Yeah, see? So uh, think of verbs, like for this one right here, you know, it might be jugar. It might be uh, correr, run, right? Uh it might be uh, uh, atrapar, caught, atrapar, right? Uh, it, okay, so, or, uh, you know, the umpire, oh, umpire was watching, might work, yeah, mirar. Uh, or the umpire paid attention or something like that. So always start with the infinitive, and then you wind up being in good shape. See, bien? Because okay. you can go into any tense, whether it's right now or past or description in the past or future. You can do any of those things, but you you got to stay away from uh, passive. Okay. Vale. Um, Ma Marilyn, be okay. before any, anybody can stay or not, but I, can I get 30 seconds to ask a question that goes back to last week with the the exercise sí. of using fue and era. Sí, por supuesto. Okay, so I wrote some stuff about, but I got down to the, what I couldn't figure out is which way to conjugate. Like when you call a company to do something, mm -hmm. and I'll just read a part of the sentence. So it's it, what's in my mind is the company, me dijo que whatever. Sí. And I couldn't decide whether the company would be singular, like me dijo, or would be plural, me dijeron. Ah, if you, if you specifically say the word, la compañía me llamó, me llamó, they called me, it'll be llamó. But often in English, the same thing happens in English. They called me. Yeah, exactly. Who's that, they? I don't know. They. It's somebody on the other yeah. end of the line, right? Right. And that's why I was confused because we use they. Sí, me the dijeron. Yeah. Muy común. This is very common thing. Me dijeron, me dijeron. They told me. Sí. Por ejemplo, uh, uh, la compañía me llamó. The company called me. Y me dijeron que. And they told me that. Me dijeron que no recibieron el cheque este mes. They told me they didn't get the check this month. So in that same sentence, the company and they told me gets two different conjugations for the same kind of entity that's doing the yeah. act. Yeah. And, and switching between those is going to be something that is very similar to what we do in English. Uh, and yeah, and often, yeah, they told me, me dijeron, they told me. Because it's kind of the faceless people behind that phone call. Okay, I've been waiting, you know, eight days to ask that question. So here we are. Thank yeah. you. And people will effortlessly switch between those like we do in English. Yeah. Igual, same thing. That's something where they, what they do is almost exactly like what we do in English. Es así. Okay, bien? Bien. Um, I will give you a little storytelling video for the week. I have not decided on it yet because I have a few things I need to preview yet. Uh, uh, but, pero, okay. Y a fotos uh, nuevas. We'll get some new pictures to talk about other different things. Sí, bien, todo bien. Está bien.
Ah, eh, sí. Excelente. Sí, y son las nueve y... No, no, son las nueve. Son las once y media, sí. Uh, so, uh, in case so, I'm sure a lot of you have things you have to be off and about too. So, eso es todo para hoy. Bien, fantástico. Y nos vemos. Y cuídense mucho.